Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Mid Speeds Live class. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. Ready? Let's start off with some common words. Work, could, dear, made, glad, like, last, shall, more, other, to, right, also, must, should, there, only, same, little, matter, <clears throat> give, find, sent, who, going, school, take, new, sir, let, attention, account, kindly, hope, year, first, week, wish, don't, thing, again, mister, way, want, home, return, these, complete, box, shipped, those, furnish, set. <clears throat> All right. Let's do some common phrases. Here we go. Sorry, there's my paper is sticking to the one behind it. All right, here we go. When you have had, where he had, where I had, where I have had, where you had, where you have had, whether he had, whether I had, whether I have had, whether or not he had, whether or not I had, whether or not I have had, whether or not you had, whether or not you have had, whether you had, whether you have had, which had, which have had, which he had, which I had, which I have had, who had, who have had, will have had, would have had, you have had, on the other hand, which is O-E-N-D, what happened, what happens, whether he happened, whether or not I happen, which happened, has been, had been, has felt, have been, have been had, have felt, had felt, <clears throat> have had, had had, had recalled, have recalled, has recalled, had recollected, has recollected, have recollected, had remembered, has remembered, have remembered, have the, had the, has the, had you been, have you been, had you ever, have you ever, had you ever been, have you ever been, had you had, have you had, can have, can I have, could have, did I have. <clears throat> Some of those sound very similar, but they are different. All right. Now, I'm gonna give you, go down the list and give you common briefs and phrases, and then I'm gonna go back and read the sentences. Here we go. As long as, ambulance, as far as, as many as, as much as, as near as, as soon as, as well as, available, boyfriend, citizenship, contract, counselor, courtroom, crosswalk, district attorney, driveway, eastbound, easterly, eastern, estimate, exam, examination, examine, example, exhibit, freeway, friendship, girlfriend, green light, headache, headlight, heroin, highway, how fast, how long, 
how old, how many times, how was, how were, innocence. And here are your sentences. <clears throat> as long as you are safe, you can go. She rode in the ambulance. John is not ill as far as I know. We have had as many as 10 dogs. It could cost as much as $20. I never knew he lived as near as he did. We will go as soon as dad gets home. Frank is here as well as Tom. The shirt is no longer available. Chris is Sandy's boyfriend. George obtained citizenship. You have signed the contract. My mom is a school counselor. This courtroom is huge. Do not enter the crosswalk. Andy is the district attorney. Philip backed out of the driveway. The suspect was driving eastbound. The wind is blowing in an easterly direction. It is 8 p.m. Eastern time. I estimate she is nine years old. Tomorrow there will be an exam. He was nervous about the examination. The doctor had to examine her bruise. I have a great example of art. <clears throat> The exhibit had opened in February. Which way to the freeway? She and I have a grand friendship. Jim really needs a girlfriend. It is a green light. You're driving, or excuse me, you're giving me a headache. One headlight is out. They busted the heroin lab. It is a long, dark highway of knowledge. How fast were you going, ma'am? How long have you two been friends? How many times have you been there? How old were you in this picture? How many showed up? How was the movie? How were they seated? The little girl's innocence was lost. All right. <clears throat> I've got some sentences that focus on dates. Here we go. It snowed on January 1st, 1989. Valentine's Day is on February 14th. Her trip was planned for August 19th. They were married on June 4th, 1950. It will start on April 1st. She will have a big party on March 11th, 2019. We plan to go to the CSR exam on November 15th. We ate a lot of turkey on November 24th, 2001. September 21st, 1970 was a very busy day. We watched the fireworks and parade on the 4th of July, 2000. Halloween is on October 31st. The meeting was on September 16th, 2005. All right. <clears throat> now, my next drill is going to be doublets. Here we go. Carpool incentives. Systematic evaluation, complimentary dinner, substantial ranking, technical controversy, behavioral strategies, consistent minimum, 
numerous improvements, preferable section, licensed subcontractor, necessary collaboration, greater emphasis, maximum participation, thorough investigation, <clears throat> selected intermediary, deliberate concession, subsidiary development, domestic monopoly, habitual deviant, inherent fallacies, hydraulic equipment, luxury condominium, orthopedic appliances, environmental surveys, guaranteed minimum, telemarketing service, corrugated cardboard, excavating equipment, seismographic activity, and furniture manufacturing. <clears throat> All right. Now I've got some top words that have been searched on the internet. Here we go. Ready? Auto parts, abandoned wear, abortion, autos, baby names, Adobe Acrobat, AGL, Air Canada, airfare, baseball, airline tickets, birds, airlines, Alta Vista, birthday cards, black and white, blank, blue book, Amazon, Amazon.com, American Airlines, Ampland.com, Amtrak, Andrea Thompson, animals, animated gifts, BMW, boats, books, boy links, Britney Spears, Burt, or excuse me, Brooke Burke, Buddy Icons, Capital Punishment, AOL.com, Apartments, Apps, April Fools, Area Codes, Art, AS400, Ask Jeeves, Astrology, Atomic Shock, Auctions, Australia, Author, Car Audio, Cards, Careers, Carmen Electra, Cartoon Dolls, Cartoons, Cats, CD Covers, CDAW550, Chat, Chat Rooms, Cheap Airline Tickets, and Cheap Flights. <clears throat> All right, now I've got some sentences here that focus on the terminal Y words. Here we go. She carries a heavy load. I prefer to help the needy. Alfred wisely admitted his mistake. He is a skinny, scrawny kid. Do you have a copy of the file? It was a gloomy, rainy day. Diane gave some extremely good advice. His story sounds fishy to me. Liam is a perfect gentleman. This freshly ground coffee has a strong flavor. I bought a lovely sweater in a sunny shade of yellow. Why is Nate so greedy? The honey is very sticky. She wore a frilly, lacy shawl. We were trainees at the same time. I feel really lucky today. We studied all night long. They are getting married that Saturday. It is a sunny, cloudless day. Do you prefer tea or coffee with your cookies? Lately, Billy has been acting silly. Lori flatly refused to get up early. He acted accordingly. They were exceedingly rude. It is too drafty in this old house. Are you actively looking for work? 
<clears throat> All right. Let's do some consonant compounds that start with SPL. Here we go. He made a splash when he jumped in the water. Use a splash board for protection. The splash down was right on time. She dressed splashlessly. Find a chair with a splat. Don't splatter hot grease. Use a plane to splay the door. The appearance was that of a splay foot. A spleen is an organ of the body. They gave a splendid performance. Some even called it splendiferous. Kings and queens live in splendor. Splice those two ropes. The surgeon performed a splenectomy. Use new spline to install the screen. He had a splint on his broken leg. Be alert for splinters. Let's split the profit. A split level house gives more space. Add a splotch of color. All right. And last but not least, I've got some medical words. Here we go. Carotids, the principal arteries of the neck. Cerebral, of or pertaining to the brain. Cerebrospinal fluid, fluid of the brain and spinal cord. Cervical vertebra, the upper seven bones of the spinal column. Coagulate, to clot. Coccyx, the last bone of the spinal column. Collie's fracture, transverse fracture of the lower extremity of the radius with displacement of the hand backward and outward. Coronary, encircling as a vessel or nerve. Cortex, the external gray layer of the brain. Crepitus, a crackling sound produced by rubbing together fragments of fractured bone. Cyanotic, pertaining to the blue discoloration of skin from non-oxidated blood. Day breed, to cut away lacerated or contaminated tissue. Decalcified, freed from lime salts. Diastolic, pertaining to the period of dilation of the heart. Diathermy, heating local tissue by the aid of the high frequency currents. Dilated, a vessel or an organ which has expanded. Disseminated, scattered. Distal, away from the center of the body. Echemosis, discoloration due to an effusion of blood into surrounding tissues after a rupture of the vessels. Embolus, <clears throat> any foreign or abnormal particle circulating in the blood as a bubble of air or a blood clot. Ephesus, a part or process of a bone which ossifies separately and subsequently becomes a part of the larger bone. Epiphyseal, pertaining to an ephesus. And epithelium, the covering of the skin and mucous membranes consisting wholly of cells of varying forms and arrangements. All right. Moving on to literary. How are we doing on time? Perfect. All right, this is called Hero Pets. All right. I'm going to start this at 120 and I will work my way to 160. Here we go. Ready? Since she was a little girl, Chloe Jean Wendell 
has had a special rapport with animals. But in the two years since her family brought Sunny Boy home to their farm in Vivian, Louisiana, the 16-year-old high school junior has bonded more closely with her quarter horse than anyone expected. Hit possibly as a colt years before, Sunny Boy was spooked by almost any human contact. No one could catch him, says Chloe Jean's dad, Mark, but my daughter had an immediate calming effect on him that allowed her to saddle him up for a ride. Sunny Boy and Chloe Jean quickly became inseparable. At the local Red Bud Festival Parade in March 2008, the whole Wendell family, Mark and wife, Bobby Joe, Chloe Jean, and her younger sister, Kristen, 15, decked themselves out in Western gear and trotted on their horses behind the Vivian Sheriff's contingent. Chloe Jean rode Sunny Boy. Kristen was on her filly, Angel. A few blocks into the parade, a 75 pound pit bull shot out of the crowd right at Angel and began to attack her. When Angel kicked back, Kristen jumped off to avoid being thrown. The snarling dog then turned on the girl. Chloe Jean dismounted to protect her sister. We watched in horror, recalls Mark. When Chloe Jean let go of the reins, Sunny Boy started as if to run off. But as the pit bull whipped around to pounce on Chloe Jean, all 1,200 pounds of Sunny Boy stopped short and jumped between them. He astonished everyone by squaring off and kicking the dog hard in the face. I was shocked, said Chloe Jean. Usually he avoids other animals. The tenacious dog flipped around and began tearing gashes in the legs of Mark's horse. Animal control officials moved in and finally captured the dog. Chloe Jean's friends clustered around her saying, your horse saved you. Indeed, the behavior was highly unusual. I've been around horses all of my life and have not seen one take on another animal like that, says Mark. That night, Chloe Jean visited Sunny Boy out in the pasture. I gave him treats and told him how thankful I was that he protected me. I think he already knew how I felt. Neat little story there. All right, let's move on to jury charge. Again, I'm gonna start at 120 and I will work my way to 160. Here we go, ready? There have been several statements as Mr. Kratz has already alluded to in his PowerPoint presentation. And this was in his opening statement. It starts off in a progression where Brendan says Stephen Avery killed Teresa Halbach, and it progresses to the point where he indicates he participated and the state will argue to you later and offer evidence throughout the trial through the officers that they believe that this progression of audio taped statements from at the school, the videotaped statements at the police station, and then the final May 13 videotaped statement as a progression to the final truth. What we want you to consider, three things, while you're watching these videotapes, and we agree very powerful videotapes, very important videotapes, but like in a story, two different stories, there's a different perspective, a different theme. We want you to look at three things, collaboration, cooperation, similar to what the state offered, they want you to look at what it corroborated. We want you to also focus on what is not corroborated. 
there are dozens of details that go uncooperated in these statements. Cooperation simply means that there's something independent that can prove the statements are true. Some other independent source that suggests that what you heard is accurate, but there are dozens of instances where their details are uncooperated. The second to consider is the inconsistencies. There are a number of inconsistencies throughout this progression of statements. When you watch these statements, take note of the different changes from one statement to the next. Simple, details that seem to be mundane, unnecessary change from statement to statement. And though the state will try to suggest that it's an escalating progression from the time they met with Brendan Dassey to the last time he talked to them, it's really a roller coaster ride of the truth, up and down. One statement says one thing and the next says the other. And it just goes that way throughout this whole progression. Some of the charges and changes are not logical. All right. <clears throat> We're gonna go ahead and get started on Q and A. I'm gonna start off with the more basic transcript that we've been working on. This is a car accident transcript. All right. Actually, you know what? Let's see here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, do the court transcript. I think that's instead of doing the depot car accident, we're going to go ahead and do some court. Okay. All right. And it looks like plaintiff is questioning. All right, so we're going to start at 120, work our way to 160. Here we go. And as part of that investigation, did you have the opportunity to be in possession of a cell phone belonging to Damien Aztec? It was on a table in the detective bureau that we had where we were conducting the investigation. I didn't physically have hold of it, but I had visual sight of it. Okay, and at some point, did you observe a text message on that phone on that date? Yes. When did that occur? It occurred on the first right, right around midnight on December 1st, 2012, right around midnight. What did you observe on that cell phone? I observed a message that was from Janine stating that the cops had been at her house and she wanted to know if she could stay at Mr. <clears throat> Aztec's house. Your Honor, I will object as relevance and lack of foundation whether this is Mr. Aztec's phone or whether she's referring to Mr. Aztec's house. How he knows that, unless the text says, can I stay at your house? I'll make this all subject to a motion to strike if there isn't foundation. I think that the relevancy is obvious, but if it's not Mr. Schultz, I'll also strike the testimony for that reason. Go ahead. Sergeant Shell, were you aware of a search warrant being served on the residence of Janine Ramirez on December 1st of 2012? At the time that you're talking about where I was in the office, I was aware that one had already been served. 
were you aware that a search warrant had been served at the residence of Damien Aztec on that same date? Yes. Did you receive information where the cell phone that you observed on that date, where that cell phone came from? Yes. What were you told? I was told that it belonged to Mr. Aztec. Who told you that? I believe it was Detective Zimmer. And how long have you been a sworn law enforcement officer? Almost 15 years. After you saw the text message from that, after you examined that cell phone from someone named Janine asking to come over, what did you do? I replied by text on that phone and told her to come over and asked her how long she would be. Was there a text message sent from Janine to that phone after you sent a reply? Yes, I received a reply back stating she was on her way, excuse me, that she was on her way. What did you do based on that information? I advised Deputy Smoot and Detective Zimmer that I had received a text message from her that she stated that she was on her way to Aztec's house and that I was going to go from the station to the area of Aztec's house and wait for her arrival. Did you end up making contact with Janine Ramirez on that night or early morning? Early morning, yes. How did that occur? I had driven my unmarked detective unit to the area of Matthews and E Street and parked in a vacant lot at that intersection. Also, I believe that it was Detective Zimmer and Detective Harris had also responded to the area, and I had been informed by Detective Zimmer that she was driving a gray Ford pickup. I waited there for a short time. After my arrival there, a gray Ford pickup turned off of E Street onto Matthews, at which time I made a traffic stop. And as I approached the vehicle, I recognized Ms. Ramirez from a photo I had seen at the station. Do you see Janine Ramirez in court today? Yes. Please identify her for the record. She's to my left on the right hand side of the council table. She's wearing an orange jumpsuit with an ID card and she has long curly hair. Your Honor, may the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant, Jeannie Ramirez. It will, nothing further. I'd like to renew my objection to strike any reference that the cell phone belonged to Mr. Aztec. The foundation laid was that Detective Zimmer told Shell that it's his phone. That's not enough. If Detective Zimmer said, I took this from Mr. Aztec's pocket, that I would argue that would be sufficient foundation. But just saying, here, Sergeant, that is Aztec's phone. I don't think that's sufficient without knowing how he knew it was Aztec's phone. I don't think it matters. I'm going to overrule your objection. Okay, Your Honor. Any questions? You indicated that you were aware of two search warrants in this case. Yes. And you are aware that one of the search warrants was of where my client, Ms. Ramirez, lives? I don't know for sure if that's where she lived. I'm aware that there was a search warrant served on Cadell in Escondido, and it was my understanding that she was related to that house. I don't know if she lived there or if it was family members that there was a belief that I didn't write the search warrant. I didn't participate in the search warrant, but I'm aware of it. Do you know whether or not they found any of these items that were allegedly stolen in this case from Mr. Gomez in that house that you believed to be related to Ms. Ramirez? 
I'm not aware of what items were found at any location or where. As of that date, correct? At that time, yes. And subsequent to that, did you become aware whether or not any items that were related to this incident were found in that house related to Ms. Ramirez? No, I did not become aware. Okay, no questions, Your Honor. No further questions. Redirect, nothing. Mr. Mendez, no, nothing, Your Honor. Okay, counsel, may this witness be excused? Yes, yes. All right, thank you, Sergeant Shell. You can be excused. This means you can go or stay, whichever you choose to do. Call your next witness. Your Honor, the people would call Detective Smoot. Do you solemnly state that the evidence you shall give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Please state your name and spell it for the record. My name is James Smoot, J-A-M-E-S-S-M-O-O-T. Good afternoon, Detective Smoot. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Your witness, Ms. Brunn. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Smoot, what is your occupation? I'm currently assigned as a detective with the San Diego County Sheriff's Department Specialized Enforcement Detail Gang Team. How long have you been employed as a sworn law enforcement officer? 17 years. Prior to your current assignment, what was your assignment? I was a deputy sheriff at the Escondido City Station acting as a, in the detective bureau on de December 1st of 2012. Were you assigned to follow up on a robbery that occurred in the city of Escondido on Connor Road? Yes, I was. As part of that follow-up, did you make contact with Juan Gomez at his residence on Connor Road? Yes, I did. As an, or in addition to making contact with Juan Gomez, did you observe any items in that residence? Could you clarify items? There were all kinds of items and stuff in the residence. Did Mr. Gomez tell you about some items that were in his residence as a result of the robbery that had previously occurred? Yes. What did he tell you? There were zip ties that were left behind from the robbery, as well as a broom handle that he believed was used to strike him with. Did Mr. Gomez point those items out to you? Yes, he did. And can you please describe what you saw? I saw some white, smaller zip ties that can be zip tied together. Appeared that they had been pulled apart, laying on the ground next to a couch, and there was a wooden broom handle approximately four feet long, leaning up against a wall. What did you do with those items? I called out the Sheriff's Service Specialist and had them collected as evidence and swabbed for DNA. Based on the information you received in this case, do you know when this incident occurred? From reading the report, original report, by the original reporting deputy, it occurred on November 29th, and your contact was on December 1st? That's correct. During your contact with Juan Gomez, did you show him any photo lineups of a male individual that contained a picture of Damien Aztec? Yes, I did. Do you see Mr. Aztec in court today? Yes, ma'am, I do. Could you please identify him for the record? He's seated a little bit to my left, third from the right, end of council table, and he has a mustache, and he is wearing an orange jumpsuit. Your Honor, could the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant, Damian Wayne Aztec? It will. Thank you. Prior to showing Mr. Gomez the photographic lineup, did you give him an admonishment? Yes, I did. Okay, so let's switch transcripts. I want to make sure you get a variety. Variety. All right. <clears throat>
This also is a, a court case. How are we doing on time? Oh, good. All right, and looks like this is the witness giving an answer. I was also housed, or excuse me, assigned the A block housing unit where I contacted hard level, hardened criminal street gang members, members of the Aliso Brotherhood and Mexican Mafia. After my assignment in Los Angeles, I was assigned to Los Angeles Police Station. During my time there, I've contacted several hundred gang members during arrest, investigations, traffic stops, pedestrian checks, counsel, and consensual encounters. During those contacts with criminal street gang members, I have also learned aspects of gang subculture, such as gang tattoos, gang paraphernalia, patterns of criminal street gang activity, and gang territories. Also during my time at Los Angeles Station, I have written several search warrants for gang paraphernalia during gang investigations. I have also been a part of several smash sweeps in which I contact gang members, interview them, discuss current gang trends, gang policies, things of that nature. Throughout my time as a deputy sheriff, I have attended a 24 hour block instruction on advanced gang awareness. I have also conducted approximately 140 hours of research on gang subculture and lifestyle as far as Hispanic gangs, African American gangs, outlaw motorcycle gangs. I have also watched approximately 16 hours of documentaries on gang subcultures and lifestyle on the same type of gangs. To keep my current gang knowledge up to date, I attend monthly meetings in which all Los Angeles gang investigators meet and discuss current gang crime trends and their current investigations. Thank you. Were you involved in the shooting investigation on September 10th of 2015 regarding Kyle Smith? Yes. Do you see Kyle Smith in court today? Yes. Could you please identify him for the record? Yes, he's the African-American male seated to my left of the defense wearing all orange. Your Honor, may the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant, Kyle Smith. No objection. All right, thank you. The record will so reflect. During your involvement in the investigation, did you become aware of the defendant's affiliation with the 250 Prada criminal street gang? Yes. How did you become aware of that? After an address for the suspect of Mr. Smith, and the other suspect, Mr. Lawson, was established. Myself and a few other investigators executed a search warrant at Mr. Smith's residence. During that search warrant, I located several pieces of what could be considered gang paraphernalia. Initially was a red baseball cap, which is indicative of a person being a member of either a blood or a Prada gang. The color red associates with both of those gangs. Also, during the search, I located a Metro PCS mobile phone agreement. On that agreement, the subscriber name was written as trigger and an email address or a contact email address was written out as trigger1 at yahoo.com, I believe. The date was August 5th, 2015, indicating whoever had wrote on it or had been assigned to it Wait, I'm going to object as to foundation with regard to this contract. Now it's interpretive, sustained. What did you find? Did you find anything else besides the red baseball hat or the Metro PCS agreement? Yes, I also found a piece of mail containing the name O. I might add that he had mail that had the address of 5075 Arlington Drive, number 257. Also in the same room, I found a piece of mail which contained Mr. Smith's name and that address indicating that all of the property there belonged to Mr. Smith and it was lying amongst all of his other property. Was the location that you were searching the same address that you 
that was on the document that you found with Mr. Smith's other articles? Yes. Did you review any anything else with regard to the defendant's affiliation with 250 Prada? Yes. Throughout Detective Hearn's investigation, he was made aware of a Facebook page, which was, according to Smith's girlfriend, controlled by Mr. Smith. I was made aware of the Facebook page in which you could publicly have access to. Once on the page, the main picture of the person's profile was a picture of Mr. Smith. All of the writing on the page was red. The color theme of the page was red, which is consistent with Mr. Smith being a member of either a Prada or a blood criminal street gang. Also, as part of your investigation, did you make contact with Detective Raymond Simmons from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department? Yes. Why is it that you make contact with Detective Simmons? Detective Simmons is an expert on Prada 250 criminal street gang. Did you ask Detective Simmons about his training and experience with criminal street gangs? Yes. What did he tell you? Detective Simmons told me that he's been a sworn peace officer in the Compton area, which is the area 250 Prada claims as their gang territory. He stated that he has been a sworn peace officer in that area for approximately 19 years and stated that he's part or he's been assigned to some type of gang task force for the past 11 years. Mr. Simmons also went on to say that throughout his career, he's been assigned to three federal gang task forces. He's stated that he's also contacted over 100, 200, or excuse me, 100 to 50 Prada gang members himself through investigations and arrests. He also stated that he's testified as a gang expert countless times. He wanted to say that he keeps his gang knowledge current by attending classes on gang subculture and gang awareness. He stated that he is currently a member of the California Gang Investigators Association, and he also stated that he currently teaches classes to new trainees at the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department Academy. Did you ask Detective Simmons about territorial boundaries of the 250 Prada gang? Yes. What did he tell you? He told me the 250 Prada gang claims a specific territory within the city of Compton. It's near, I believe, the Compton Airport. And I don't recall the exact four streets that make up the territory, but I know that they encompass 250th Street which is where the gang derived its name. Did you ask Detective Simmons how many gangs there are in 250 Prada? Yes, Detective Simmons told me that at its peak, 250 Prada had approximately 100 members and stated now that he knows of 30 active members. Did you ask Detective Simmons if 250 Prada has any common signs or symbols that they use? Yes, Detective Simmons told me that 250 Prada criminal street gang members use several common signs or symbols in their apparel and their graffiti. He stated words such as 250 Prada, 250P, 250 Neighborhood, different de deviations from just 250 mostly. Did you ask Detective Simmons if one of the primary purposes of the 250 Prada criminal street gang was committing offenses that are enumerated in Penal Code Section 186.20E? Yes, ma'am. What did he tell you? Yes, he told me that 250 Prada criminal street gang members participate in the pattern of criminal activity and have committed several of the offenses listed in 186.20. Did you ask Detective Simmons about if 250 Prada has any rivals? Yes. What did he tell you? Detective Simmons told me 250 Prada is considered to be a blood gang or a blood set, which would indicate they rival with any Crip gang, any type of Crip gang. I believe he listed with the Crips a few different Crip sets in the area. He also went on to mention a Hispanic gang. I believe it was a Compton gang. 
So the 250 Prada rivals with both African American and Hispanic gangs in the area. Did you ask Detective Simmons if he was familiar with the defendant Kyle Smith? No, I don't believe that I did. Based on your participation in this investigation, the things that you reviewed and your contact with Detective Simmons, do you have an opinion as to whether Kyle Smith is a member of 250 Prada? Yes, I do. What is that opinion? I believe that Mr. Smith is an active member of the 250 Prada Criminal Street Gang for several reasons. First, the cellular cell phone contact in his room indicated that he utilizes several of the common signs and symbols utilized by the gang. The contract was signed on August 10th of 2014, indicating that he aligns himself with the gang as early as that day. He also had paraphernalia or clothing that would indicate that he's a member of a blood gang or a Prada gang. He is able to wear that clothing out to be seen by other gang members, so they'll know what type of gang that he's from. Also due to the fact that he maintains a Facebook page, which can be accessed by utilizing the gang's name, is a fairly strong indicator. Also, the theme of the Facebook page is red. Other indicators include that he was associating himself with a member of neighborhood Prada criminal street gang just prior to the alleged offense, and the member, which is Mr. Lawson, of that criminal street gang. I object as to the statement that Mr. Lawson is a member of the 250 Prada street gang. I stated that he was a member of the neighborhood Prada ma'am, or the neighborhood Prada gang. No foundation sustained. Were there any other things on which you base your opinion that Mr. Smith is a member? Yes, in his association with, excuse me, during his interviews, the way that he referred to himself and Mr. Lawson, the co-defendant, or what was the co-defendant prior to the plea, is Lil G or OG. Lil G is a common street term for Lil Gangster, and OG is a common street term used for original gangster. So the two were, excuse me, Mr. Smith was referring to the two as maybe gang partners, gang allies. Objection as to that conclusion, calls for speculation, no foundation. Well, that's an interesting objection. How do you know that? Which part? The OG. OG? Yes. I've contacted, like I said, countless gang members. During my contact with them, it's very, very common that the older or more established member of the gangs will be referred to as an OG. In speaking with them, OG, you come to the decision after they tell you that OG stands for original gangster and just due to the fact that they're either tenured or they've established a reputation or a lot of them have been around for so long that they've even out of the participation of criminal activity, okay, that's good enough for me. It's also my opinion that, sorry. Go ahead, objection, no question pending. Is there anything else that you considered in your opinion that the defendant is a member of the 250 Prada gang? Yes, it's also my opinion that actually, this was not necessarily that he was a member, more along the lines of the benefit of the criminal street gang for the crime is what I was going to mention. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, how come you didn't ask the, what was the name of that detective down in Compton? Detective Stevens? Yes, why didn't you ask him if he knew this guy? To me, that's so fundamental. Why wouldn't you ask that question? Well, generally speaking, young criminal street gang members will establish their association in a particular area, establish their assignments or alignments with whatever particular street gang they are with, and they'll commonly move out of the area. I just took it for granted and assumed that Mr. Smith had moved from the area prior to Detective Stevens ever having a chance to contact him. 
mainly due to the fact that Mr. Smith has no criminal history, not really any type of situation where he would have been contacted by Detective Stevens. You know what they say about assumptions, right? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Thank you. Detective Johnson, are you familiar with a Darnell Terrell Howard with a date of birth of April 22nd of 1989 who committed a violation of Penal Code Section 211 on March 5th of 2012? Yes. How is it that you are familiar with that individual? I spoke with Detective Stevens about this particular case and this individual. At, and what did he tell you about that case and that individual? Detective Stevens told me Hall was a member of the 250 criminal Prada with a moniker of Jump. Detective Stevens stated that he had reviewed the case and believed Mr. Howard to be a member of that criminal street gang. You said Hall. No, I meant Howard. Thank you. Did Detective Stevens tell you that Darnell Howard was convicted on that case under case number MR084814? I don't remember specifically, but if it's in the report written as that, yes. Would it refresh your recollection if you looked at your report? Yes. With the court's permission? Sure, go ahead. It looks like case number MR084814. 814. Are you familiar with a Demetrius Reynolds with a date of birth, December 17, 1968, whom on September 19, 2010, committed a violation of Penal Code Section 12021A1? Yes. How are you familiar with that individual? Detective Stevens provided me information regarding Mr. Reynolds, stating that he is a member of the 250 Prada gang and believed his moniker to be Poppy. And did Detective Stevens tell you that Demetrius Reynolds was convicted on that case under case number MR761015? Yes, based on the knowledge of this case, your participation in the investigation, your review of the discovery, do you have any opinion as to whether the crimes committed in this case were for the benefit of, at the direction of, or in association with a criminal street gang? Yes, absolutely. What is your opinion? Based on my training and experience and all the things that I have learned and come across in dealing with gang members, the number one aspect of gang subculture and gang lifestyles is respect or reputation. Acts of violence such as shooting at a person is the number one way to gain respect and or reputation by any gang member. So that Mr. Smith shot the victim not only enhances his reputation and the amount of respect that other gang members have for him, he's also enhanced the respect and reputation of 250 Prada criminal street gang members. As stated when he was interviewed by Detective Hearns, he didn't call the police because then he would be a snitch. In gang lifestyle, that would mean absolutely no respect whatsoever would be had by him. Also, in the interview, he says, win or lose, I still gain respect. That indicates that the most important thing for him during that time was to try to gain respect for himself. As a normal civilian would know, a person shooting another person would not mean any respect whatsoever it would be frowned upon by society. But in a criminal street gang setting, that's the utmost way to gain respect. Thank you, nothing further. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you conduct any investigation on Mr. Stubbs' background regarding 250 Prada? Yes. Did you find anything? No. Okay, so you don't have any information. What about Mr. Smith? being jumped into the 250 Prada. No. Mr. Smith didn't sign a gang card, did he? No. Are you aware of any tattoos that Mr. Smith has had regarding the 250 gang Prada? No. That's it. I have no further questions. Thank you. Anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything else? 
the people would, the people rest as far as testimony. We would ask that exhibits one and two be moved into evidence. No objection. All right, thank you. They will be admitted. Affirmative evidence, counsel? No, your honor. People's motion. The people move that the defendant be held to answer for all crimes chargeable by the evidence. Ms. Seitz, submit on all counts except for the street terrorism count of count three. Okay, the reason being is that I don't think that they've established that Mr. Smith was acting at the direction of, for the benefit of, or in association with a criminal street gang. This seems to be a personal fight between the victim and Mr. Smith, with the victim pursuing Mr. Smith. And Mr. Smith acted the way that he did because he was in fear that the victim was actually going to come back and kill him. It didn't have anything to do with a street gang. I don't even think that there's enough evidence to say that Mr. Smith is actually a member of a street gang. All that there is, is some paraphernalia found in his room and a website with a red background. Just on that, I'm going to submit. Do you wish to be heard? No, Your Honor. The court has a reasonable suspicion that the crimes charged in the complaint have been committed and the defendant has committed them. He will be held to answer for those crimes and all crimes shown by the evidence in the trial court on December 23rd at 8.30 in Department 4. And Michael, what's his bail set at? $300,000. Bail is actually set pretty low. All right, I'll leave bail as set, but bail is set low. All right, exhibits one and two will be returned to the DA. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That's the end of that case. Hello, Olivia. <laughs> All right, what, what time is it? Three, oh, perfect, okay. Perfect timing to end that transcript. Let's do a little bit of read back. Okay. All right. This is going to be plaintiff questioning. I'm going to start at 160. That last the end of that last one was all 160. So, all right, so we'll start at 160, then 140, and then 120. Here we go. Your son was attending Fairgrove Middle School. That's right. The first time that he ever had a class with Mr. Vandermint was in the fall. I believe so. What grade was he in at the time? He was in eighth grade. Had you known Mr. Vandermint prior to the time? You know what? This sounds so familiar. I don't think, oh, you know what? I read the first page, but not the second. Sorry. Let's do take two. Scratch that. I don't want to read, read something. I did the first page, but not the second. I didn't see my little marker there. Okay. So it's still plaintiff. Here we go. When did he start complaining about dizzy spells and his legs hurting? Along in September. September, right after school started. That continued on up until February? Yes. During that period of time, were you asking him what caused it to hurt? Well, I would ask him how it hurt, but my sister told me she thought they were growing pains in his legs. I just figured he would be over it one day. Did you ask him if he had fallen and hurt himself in any way? Yes, I did. What would he say? He said he hadn't fallen. Had you questioned him several times about it? Yes, but he never said anything about being hurt until February? Not until February when he really got sick. In February, did he appear to be worse? Yes, very much. Did he limp? Yes. Was it quite a noticeable limp when he would walk? Very much, yes. He could not walk the same. All right, so we'll do it again at 140. 
Here we go. When did he start complaining about dizzy spells and his legs hurting? Along in September, September, right after school started. That continued on up until February? Yes. During that period of time, were you asking him what caused it to hurt? Well, I would ask him how it hurt, but my sister told me she thought they were growing pains in his legs. I just figured he would be over it one day. Did you ask him if he had fallen and hurt himself in any way? Yes, I did. What would he say? He said he hadn't fallen. Had you questioned him several times about it? Yes, but he never said anything about being hurt until February? Not until February when he really got sick. In February, did he appear to be worse? Yes, very much. Did he limp? Yes. Was it quite a noticeable limp when he would walk? Very much, yes. He could not walk the same. Okay, last time at 120. When did he start complaining about dizzy spells and his legs hurting? Along in September, September, right after school started. That continued on up until February? Yes. During that period of time, were you asking him what caused it to hurt? Well, I would ask him how it hurt, but my sister told me she thought they were growing pains in his legs. I just figured he would be over it one day. Did you ask him if he had fallen and hurt himself in any way? Yes, I did. What would he say? He said he hadn't fallen. Had you questioned him several times about it? Yes, but he never said anything about being hurt until February? Not until February when he really got sick. In February, did he appear to be worse? Yes, very much. Did he limp? Yes. Was it quite a noticeable limp when he would walk? Very much, yes. He could not walk the same. How are you, Olivia? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm good, doing well. good. So we changed um, the high speed class time again. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. It'll be tomorrow at 5.30. Yes, yeah. 5.30 yeah. to 7. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. hopefully that works a little bit better. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, that'll work for me. Good. Yeah. Good. Very good. Okay. Well, okay. If you want, um, do you want to each take a cue and an A? Sure, that's fine. Okay. All right. Have you already found your spot? I found it. All right. Okay, you go ahead. And, you can go ahead and start. Okay, question. When did he start complaining complaining about dizzy spells and his legs hurting? Um, answer, um, a long, in, I have a long in September. Yep, that's right. A long in okay. September. I know it's kind of funny, huh? A long. Yeah. I know. Okay, question. September, answer, right after school started. Um, um, question, <laughs> that... Um, something continue up until yep. that back. I got that back though. I can't tell what that is. That back continued up until February. Yeah, so it's just that continued. Okay, that continued up. Yeah, until on Feb up. On up until yep. February. Answer yep. yes. Awesome. Question During that period of time, were you asking him what caused it to hurt? Answer well. I would ask him how it hurt, but my sister told me she thought they were growing pains in his legs. I just figured he would be over it one day. Question, did you ask him if 
he had fallen and hurt himself in any way? Answer, yes, I did. Awesome. Question, what would he say? Answer, he said he hadn't fallen. Question, had you questioned him several times about it? Answer, yes. Question, but he never said anything about being hurt until February? Answer, not until February when he really got sick. Question, in February, um, February, what did I do? Um, something about words. I don't know. My fingers are all over the place here. That's okay. okay. February, did he appear? Oh, did he, did, in February, did he appear to be worse? Yep. Answer, yes, very much. Awesome. Question, did he limp? Answer, yes. Question, was it quite a lot? No, no, no. Was it quite a noticeable limp when he would walk? Answer, very much. Um, yes, he could not walk the same um Oh, the same. Oh, then I got 140. Okay. Yep, that's perfect. You cannot walk the same. Okay. Awesome. Good job. Yeah. That's awesome. So you think then tomorrow yeah. will work for you? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And that and that and right, that'll be fine because I I'll be home time enough and tomorrow I'm off. I have to. Uh, my son, he's um he is grad. He's he has he's functioning autism. Um, high autism, so he's graduating from um, the life transition program. So um, they're having a graduation. So tomorrow morning he has to go for a senior breakfast, and then they have to practice graduating. So I'll be off tomorrow. So yeah, that's so um, neat. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Excited. Yeah. yeah, he is bless his teeth, such a sweetheart. That's my anchor. He just, oh. you know, he, he tells me last week. Cause I took him to get his uh, cap and gown and he says, uh, we're in the car coming in. I said, next week is the senior breakfast. He said, mommy, you coming with Anthony? I said, yeah, babe, I'll be there. So, so I got to be there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> you know, when I lived in Oregon, I was an aide for the school district and I, uh -huh. I, I got to, um, work with high functioning autistic kids. I got to follow, I worked at the middle school and I, okay. And I got so attached to those kids. Oh, you do, you do. Oh. They, they, you know, they just, they just, they, you just love them because they are just genuine, you know. Yeah, and uh, exactly. he's come along. We don't like. They're so. If if you if they like you, they will have your back. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes, that's true. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I have just, to tell you this funny story. So one day it was ugly sweater day. Uh huh. So I wore an ugly sweater, you know, and um. I was with this boy that I followed, you know, I went to all of the classes with him and helped him. I was like his aide. So, right. you know, and I, I got to know him really well. And so we were getting stuff out of the, his locker and the, one of the science teachers walked by and said, Oh, Jill, nice, ugly sweater. And he turned around my student and he says, you know, I don't like you. You are not nice. <laughs> and the teacher goes, Oh no, no, no. It's, it's ugly sweater day. So that's why she wore that sweater. He said, I don't care. That's just rude. You know, it was just so cute. That he... <laughs> they are. They're just literal. Very, very literal. Yeah. And, and you just, no, that's, and you're his friend. So yes. don't, no, I don't care what day it is. That's me. <laughs> I know it was oh, everything yeah, was yeah, so black and yeah, white, you know. Yeah, yeah. No oh, there's no in between. You know, oh, it was right. funny. My daughter, she was she one night they were walking and he's in there exercising and she was saying, Go, Anthony, it's your birthday. And he just stopped and he looked at her. It's not my birthday. <laughs> she said, Oh mommy, this is too funny. <laughs> I said, He is. That's it's just to the point. And sometimes I can get him and say, Anthony, I was, I'm just teasing. Just kidding, mommy. So, yeah, this, that's my heart. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, love it. I have yeah. two cousins that have two, a girl, one has a girl, one has a boy, and they're autistic and they're just, they're precious, you know, they're just yeah, yeah. And so smart and just, oh, yeah, but, yeah. Man, they're just so, you know, well, in my son in high school, he 
had a friend that was again high functioning. He was in a lot mm-hmm. of his classes. Very smart. I think he was Ashburgh's. And uh-huh. yeah, well, that is that's high functioning autism. Yeah, yeah, yep. really, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. they, they ran cross country together and they ran track. So mm-hmm. this boy would go all out at the cross country meets. And, you know, that's three and a half miles. And my son would tell him, look, his name was Eric. He said, look, Eric, you, you don't r- try not to run all out in the beginning of the m- first mile because you're going to wear yourself out. And that's why you get so tired. So the coaches started working with this kid. And by the senior year, this kid had this running down like he he loved it and he yeah. focused on yeah. that and yeah. he ended up going to a college and running in college. Wow, that's wonderful. But, yeah. So yeah. Then, the funny thing is, is they had a, a, a teacher that was a Spanish teacher and she was very like young and really pretty. Mm-hmm. But Ryan would come home and say, you know, mom, some of the boys are so disrespectful to this teacher. And one kid kept saying, um, will you go to the uh, prom with me or to the homecoming or something? she says no I'm your teacher I'm you know like and then he had a remote control he got a remote control airplane thing like he had a little thing and she said put it away and he wasn't listening so Eric like it kind of flew by Eric's head and he grabbed it in the air and he snapped it in half and put it on the kid's desk and said she told you to put it away and you didn't listen and you know he didn't get in trouble because you know yeah 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 it's so funny you know because they they are that's how they are you just literal to the point yep. but i tell you they love you they so love you incredible. unconditionally yeah and that's the way it is i mean i love my daughter she's sweet i love her but he just it's just that soft spot and that's what he's done for the family because mm-hmm. whenever mm-hmm. there's something on autism auntie Libby, where's anthony i heard you know so it's it just brought light to the family you know because yeah. um it's so funny. I'll tell you this, and if you can go, it was so funny. They, they had taken him. At, I was going to take this one of those ugly CSR tests in November, and it was his birthday. So they took him to, uh, oh, one of those, either Red Lobster or something. But he remembered from a time past, they didn't have barbecue sauce. So my nieces came, took him and my daughter, and I'm like, okay, Anthony, whatever. So no problem. He got there. And when the waiter came, and they were saying, okay, no uh, barbecue sauce. So my daughter's preparing to tell him, no, Anthony, they don't have it. He reached in his pocket and pulled all his barbecue sauce. He knew. <laughs> they said, Anthony, and the waiter's like, gave him a high five. He said, dude, I'm not mad at you. He said, barbecue sauce. And he was happy. I mean, it, it just, there's times I have no control. It's like, oh, that's how I forget it, you know, because no. you try so hard, try, but that's who they are. That's it was right. Funny. He had his barbecue sauce. She said, oh, I don't believe it. I said, well, what can we do? But, I love it. Yeah, that yeah. is so awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. my heart. So, they're yeah. Just so they're true, and there's not one. That, that, there's no phoniness. Yeah, nope. nope, nope. They're there. They're honest, and you can tell. And when, he, when he's not, when he's trying to tease me, and I, I said, are you, are you, are you, what is so you are you fooling me trying to trick me? Uh he got he gets this real silly grin on his face though. But yeah, that's that's my heart. And so I, I'm proud and just the transition, the whole world of um special needs is such a oh my goodness, it's such I've lived it, I grew up, you know, I raised them. Mm-hmm. But it's just a it's a different world in itself, you know. Uh, it forces you to I mean you're the advocate and yep. speak up and uh, you help them to be as much independent as possible. Yeah. Uh, because certain things he's able to do, and then there's other things that he, he can't. Yeah. But yeah. It, he has helped me to learn, you know, when, you know, when to pursue, you know, relax, you know, and see what's the battle. Pick and choose your battle. That's right. Pick and choose your battle. It does certain things, you know, oh, let it go. It, it, it's not that serious. So, That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know my cousins say the same thing. The one, um, she's an attorney and he's, you know, some mm. professor and they have their daughter, you know, is autistic. And they said with their son, they have an older son and they said mm. they were so hard on him. And then they had their daughter and they're like, like that, pick your battles. Like it's- Yeah, pick your battles. And, you know, cause I'll tell anyone when growing up with him, I was able to get in a really pro- good program 
and um, they were wonderful. And I went to seminars, and I tell you, I learned so so much. And uh, they just—I mean, one seminar I'd gone to, they had us. Um, they had to sign this waiver because they wanted us to see what it felt like to be autistic. So we were in this room and we had to put these burlap sacks on. And then we are in this room and you had incense burning, you had the radio, you had the school bell ringing. I mean, all kinds of stuff. And the teacher was talking and you couldn't hear and you have this, you have that. So they did that. So we went went back, you know, and changed. And they just said, tell me, tell us how you feel. Said, oh my gosh, it was uncomfortable. Da, da, da. That's how they feel. Uh -huh. And they gave you a chance to understand. And they said, parents, if he wants to wear the same shirt, let him wear it. Yeah. Just get a vibe of the same shirt. Who cares? That's right. Pick <laughs> and choose your battle. And that's where I really learned that a lot of times they do have allergic reaction to certain clothing mm -hmm. they, they can't wear like tags and the, i mean all the shirt uh, shirts but the tags were cut out it really irritates them they're not trying to be difficult they can't deal with it certain materials mm -hmm. he couldn't he couldn't wear it yeah so as yeah. you learn more about it and like i said you pick and choose your battles and that's mm -hmm. what i have learned and i tell parents you know that with much younger kids what I've learned and what work and talk, you know, talk to them, talk to them. Even when you, when they're nonverbal or you think they're not getting it, they're getting it. Mm -hmm. As a parent, they teach you because they force you, they force you to slow down because in, cause you love them so much and you see it on their face when you, you lost them. You have to slow down. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a lot of patience, but once they get it, when you give them a routine, um, a chore, clockwork. Yep. Won't have a problem. Won't have a problem. Yeah, they yeah. do it. So, yeah, yeah. But it's a whole new world. It's a whole new way of life. And my thing was a new normal. Because mm -hmm. he, my son is six, he's around here somewhere. He's six two. And wow. uh, yeah. So now he has a Fitbit. I bought him, a, got him a Fitbit. So keep him busy until I transition him. Um, he's, you know, uh, structured, and uh, now his thing is the walking. So it's like okay, because he's getting like over thirty thousand, forty thousand steps a day. But it's a good thing because I I don't want him on that computer all day. So, yeah. but like I said, it's a new normal. It's a new way, and it's never a dull moment. But I tell you, Jill. It's never that kind of love yeah. that you will ever experience because they're just so loving and just uh -huh. so unconditional, that untruly unconditional love. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it yeah. special? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I never got yeah. it until I worked with those kids and. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, I had his teachers who I still speak with. They, a lot of them, once they got out of regular ed and to special ed, they would never, they couldn't go back. They said, you know what? I couldn't go back to special, I mean, uh -huh. to regular ed. Because it, the, the, the kids in elementary school was the book, her boys, my, uh, my his teacher, these are my boys. And that's how she looked at them. And it was special. It was really special. And it made such a difference in who he is today. So, yeah. No. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you can't yeah. make it tomorrow night because you're busy, don't worry. You can always. Uh, no, no, I, no. I'm home because I've everything done during the day, so I'll be fine. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, see you tomorrow night. Uh, okay. All right, Miss Jill. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. you too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye.